Wireless technology has been a critical part of every mine site for years. But the decision on which type of wireless to choose has become more complex with the choices of Wi-Fi, LTE, LoRaWAN, and multiple fixed wireless and mesh options. I'm Roland Plett, and in this video, I'll help you position each of these technologies for their most valuable use cases, so you're not frustrated by using the wrong tool for the job that you happen to have. Before we get into the latest wireless technologies, let's recognize what got us here. The wireless technology that is most widely deployed in mining today is Wi-Fi. It is a natural choice because so many of the devices we use every day depend on Wi-Fi for connection. This works well for all IT and OT applications like workflow management and asset management and many more. As control system elements and measurement devices start to go wireless, most of these are produced with Wi-Fi radios built in. Wi-Fi is relatively inexpensive and doesn't require any special spectrum license to operate. This makes it easy to deploy initially, but we've seen a few challenges start to emerge. Because Wi-Fi operates above that one gigahertz in RF, it can carry a lot of data, but it doesn't go very far. If you need to cover a large mine site, for example, you'll need hundreds of access points to get into every corner. If you're connecting from something that moves, then your application will need to be okay with a disruptive handoff between access points. These two requirements of coverage and seamless handoff, they start to push mine operators towards other wireless technologies. And this is what I'd like to talk about next. The first technologies that became popular after Wi-Fi also leverage much of the Wi-Fi technology, but they change some fundamental components that prevent seamless handoff. One company that did this really well started in Italy under the name Fluid Mesh, and they've demonstrated seamless handoff at speeds that exceed 200 kilometers an hour with zero drop packets. It can carry a lot of data, including video, remote control, and applications that move geology data back and forth from the mine face. The challenge of coverage, eh, that's similar to Wi-Fi, but it provides bulletproof handoff between access points and has a lot of data capacity. Now, as wireless proved more and more useful, mining companies were looking for ways to cover as much of the mine as possible. And that is introduced to other wireless technologies, LTE and LoRaWAN. LTE comes from the service provider world and is the technology that your cell phone uses. LoRaWAN comes from the IoT world where people are connecting parking meters, street lights, garbage bins, and other IoT sensors. Both of these technologies cover multiple kilometers from one radio. LTE and 5G do have large coverage areas and they work well for a large number of devices and they have moderate to high data capacity depending on the nature of the deployment. This sounds exactly like what's needed in mining. Unfortunately, they're a complex system that costs millions of dollars to deploy just one tower. Transforming these large systems into a mine environment, well, it's not that simple. And in most cases, mine sites need to acquire an operating license from the communications regulator in the area. Now, several mining companies have decided that the benefits outweigh the challenges of LTE. And companies like Cisco are making the deployment of these systems easier and more integrated into network operations. Uh, for example, uh, they're integrating the LTE management and security policies into the broader enterprise environment that Cisco has experience with. Although LTE systems have been successfully deployed in mines, it is important to know that many trade-offs need to be assessed just to make sure that it's a good fit for you and your operation. Now, before I wrap up, I mentioned another wireless technology. I'd like to introduce you to that now. LoRaWAN also provides this coverage to large areas, 
And it's a great fit for sensors that need long battery life and only transmit small intermittent streams of data. Now Cisco and others have packaged this technology into a simple service that is easy to deploy with a growing collection of sensors available. There's no license to acquire and cost to deploy is relatively low. Even if other wireless technologies exist in the area, it may still make sense to put in a LoRaWAN system for specific use cases. Well, there you have it. That is a whirlwind tour of the wireless technologies most common in mining today. There's so much more to talk about in comparing each of these technologies, and you'll see more from me on each of these technologies in the months to come. You can continue learning and exploring with other videos that I've already got. Um, just click on the next video. Or you can like and subscribe and ensure that you get notified on upcoming videos as well. Look forward to seeing you again. Take care.